Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 370, the second episode recorded today, Friday. Kind of a casual conversation between the two of us. I'm Kevin Coulson. I'm George Conger. Today's February 9th, 2018. Okay, George. Uh, first, a health update. Uh, you and I had a conversation on Skype yesterday. I know the weather down there is darn nice. Um, so we're not going to talk about the weather, but uh, uh, how's the leg, the body? Uh, have you recovered from your flu? Off all the steroids, off all the antibiotics. I finally read the side effect list. <laughs> Dementia, weight gain, blood sugar spikes. Uh, and this is stuff to make me feel better. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> it'll so, save your life but boy if you survive you're lucky well but you know i don't think i'll beat my tap dancing career is just i'm sorry it's done uh but uh no god has been good to me and a generation ago before antibiotics they tell me i would have lost my leg it have to be chopped off at the knee wow. and uh well, actually, it would have been great for our pirate theme, Gavin, with an eye patch and me with a peg leg. And you can have a bandana around your head, Kevin. That's right. Yeah, well, I still need that. You may not need the leg chopped off, but I could I could use some coverage on top, especially in the summer. I think I'm going to burn this summer. We shall see. Okay, let's move on to the news. Uh, the breaking show we had earlier this week was uh, clearly the news out of Sudan, where a, a female was consecrated a bishop kind of in violation of the principle uh, that GAFCON has set forth. Uh, clearly it was done in secret. Nobody wanted this to get out who performed the consecration. Um, and so it's time to talk about the the aftermath. You know, what effect has this had on GAFCON? What's GAFCON's response? What effect is this having on Sudan and other African countries around them? And, you know, George and I have been reading the news stories and collecting emails and trying to get feelers for what effect this has now my suspicion was early on when i heard this that there's going to be a large groundswell of people on facebook and the blogs and elsewhere uh being pretty steamy mad how can gafcon let this happen i have not seen that observationally and so um, that's kind of where I'm coming with it. I, I am upset, certainly, that this this happened, but I don't see my upsetness reflected in uh, social media. Um, George, what have you learned uh, this week? Fascinating things, Kevin, because it has just changed. This is not another Gene Robinson affair. Mm -hmm. In the sense of Gene Robinson's consecration changed everything in the Anglican it world. Did, yeah. This is not anywhere even close, and I don't even want to compare the issues, but from a news perspective, it should have been where a conservative province uh, broke a moratorium agreed by the primates not to ordain a woman as a bishop. They went ahead and did it. Well, let's, foc let's start focusing on South Sudan. I've talked to a number of South Sudanese bishops, and this is nowhere on their radar. And it's not because they don't care but rather they are facing a crisis within their church. As we've reported here in Anglican Inc., the election for a new archbishop, uh, there are credible accusations of fraud. Now in 1988, they had an archbishop election in Sudan and there were fraud elections, fraud allegations, and it caused a schism. And right now, the bishops in South Sudan are basically in the midst of a fight over whether we're going to break apart or hold together because of a fraudulent election. Okay, hold. I've learned from the Church of England and the ACC that this is a model for elections and that Sudan did a wonderful job. Um, and uh, Adu Faron says this, nothing happened here, there's no problem. Uh, the ACNS says, you know, everything went off without a hitch, great election, um, and a valid election. Why do well, the bishops disagree with the uh, the heads of the uh, Anglican Communion? I believe there are 46 South Sudanese dioceses, mm -hmm. 31 bishops and or vicar generals have signed a letter prepared by one of the archbishops of the internal Sudanese provinces, pointing out the problems with the election. First problem is that you need a majority, two-thirds, to be named archbishop. The Justin uh, body uh, won the election by one vote. 
So they did a 50% plus one election rather than a two-thirds election. Okay. And that's what it says in the Constitution. Second, all the dioceses must have active serving bishops before an archbishop can be elected. Well, they're short. Well, they, one diocese didn't have a bishop, mm -hmm. and Archbishop Daniel Dang asked the retired bishop to come on over anyway and vote. Third, not everybody who was there was supposed to be there. In other words, there were lay clergy and Episcopal delegates to this election. And not and people voted and the diocese didn't send everybody who they were supposed to send. And so you had delegates come and I'm gonna vote for John Smith, even though my name is Fred Jones, because we never got around to setting the paperwork in. Now at the time, the uh bishops in the uh, opposition said, Look, this is a shambles. You know, we've got people who are not supposed to be here who are voting, people who in, and the names of other people, we've got retired bishops voting, and we have a two-thirds majority. And the registrar said, well, tough. We'll just, we've always done it that we've, it doesn't matter what the Constitution says, this is what we did last time. That's a difficult issue. Now, on top of this, I'm told by the South Sudanese bishops, they have never, ever had a discussion of women bishops. Never. It's never come up in their, any of their House of Bishops meetings. It's not been an issue that they have discussed, whether they're for it or against it. And a number of these South Sudanese bishops, when they came to this House of Bishops meeting, learned for the first time. But for them, the issue is, is you know, the House is on fire uh, is more important for them and pressing than whether or not this woman as an assistant bishop should be an assistant bishop or not. Now, let me just go jump onto the Josiah Dowie for own thing. The ACNS, oh, they're a mendacious bunch of people. They really are. We say that out of love, but yeah. Uh, okay, they put out this story that the South Sudan election is a model of how the Sudanese civil society should be. Within five days, we've got all these complaints, and guess what? They're saying they're all lies, they're untrue, they're just troublemakers because they've been made once again to look like idiots. And so what Josiah Wadawi Faron is now doing, he's doubling down. Just like in the forgery controversy in uh, Nigeria with Joel Waweru, Bishop of Nairobi, who forged the Archbishop uh, Wabakula's signature, uh, they are doubling down on the guy they backed even though fraud was committed. In this particular case, Josiah Wadawi Faron really ticked off a number of the Sudanese bishops because he gave a little speech at the end and he cited the Quran okay. in his speech. Now, yes. now, why don't you walk into the Anti-Defamation League or Temple Beth Israel and cite passages from Mein Kampf? You know, the Sudanese have been persecuted by the Muslims from Khartoum for generations. Gen for 400 years, yes. And and one of the bishops said, why would you even think of using a Quran illustration to make a point? And Josiah Wadawa Faron's response, according to my uh, uh, interlocutor, was that, well, this is what came to my mind. <sighs> uh, I, I got to tell you, Kevin, this is just... Sudan's a mess, and frankly, they can't they can't be bothered about the women's issue because the house is burning down. No, I mean, it, it, maybe a better il illustration is you can't worry about what uh, sails they have on the ship when the ship is sinking. You know, yeah. it's yeah, um, it, it's sad, and we do need to keep them in our prayers. Um, my my biggest complaint is it was clearly a tainted election, and the people who were there to oversee it didn't say a word. Um, <sighs> And now the new archbishop has told the local Sudanese media, oh, this is all lies, it's untrue, everything's fine. But he's also going around the church of Sudan saying, look, I can't do anything about this until I'm archbishop and I'm not going to be installed until March, I think it's March, and then we'll work it out. So publicly, everything is fine. Privately, they know they got a mech, they know they have a mess, and now the good news is is those pointing out these things saying we will be loyal to you we will honor the outcome of the election but we want you to know that we know <laughs> we know it was fixed <laughs> so don't you pull any in other words the, their fear after the 1988 election um 
the different sides created new dioceses to pack the house of bishops with supporters of each side so that when they would have a combined meeting one side would uh, be able to outvote the other they're saying look no new dioceses no new no new assistant bishops we're not packing the uh, house of bishops until we get this settled and we create bishops for ecclesial reasons not political reasons exciting times it is. isn't it well, you were talking uh, at, at the introduction uh, about how this is not comparable really to Gene Robinson. And if people can think back to 2001, 2002, 2003, there was a buildup to the consecration. Uh, there was, you know, the flying back and forth across the ocean to work with Canterbury, the uh, communion. Frank Griswold promising not to do it. <laughs> the communion putting together press releases and statements and communiques, emergency meetings of the primates. Um, do you remember faxes, Kevin? Yeah. Faxes. Rowan Williams <laughs> sent a fax to General Convention. Well, My goodness. Apparently, you know, the, the Morse code guy was busy that day. So, you know, there was a huge buildup. And in as such was what happened in Sudan. It, um, this is something that happened a year ago. We're finding about it in arrears. Um, and it doesn't have that same tension, I think, within social media and the church as it did with Gene Robinson. Um, well, see, for me, let's put the issue of the woman bishop to one side. To me, I have been asking about this for a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we and and the statement put out by Gafcon's secretariat was that, well, Bishop Deng came clean in April 2017, and we were all sort of surprised by this, but we agreed to Omerta. We're going to keep quiet. We're not going to tell anybody that he's done this. Omerta. <laughs> so Lambeth Palace knew. Yep. Because Josiah Wado, Ferron and company there, Jess Welby there. had yep. been there, mm-hmm. has been to South Sudan. You know, this is the best kept secret. I mean, <laughs> some stuff they can't help but leak, and other stuff that I want to find out, they're not t- they're not playing fair. Well, it, so, so I guess I'm just saying, what was Gavcon thinking? I know, I think I know what they're thinking, but what were they thinking about hiding this? You know, what happens at the Jerusalem conference when everybody gets there and Jack Eicher's standing on the podium with all the other bishops and he sees a woman bishop? And that's the first I'll have heard of it Up until George and Kevin open their big fat mouths. Yeah. Well, in, in a such, you and I are also gun shy. Okay. Yes. We, okay, with the EMEA, um, our desire in okay. The application of knowledge, uh, the ability to shine a light on something and say, and, and to be transparent about an organization, a person, a ministry, a government, um, that's just part of being the free press. And I've always believed if you shine a light, light on something and you're able to see what that is um, inside and out, and that thing you've shined a light on doesn't crumple, um, then it's a valid ministry. And so in the early days of Anglican Scripted, where we got our big flashlight and we talked about and analyzed different uh, ministries and people, sometimes the flashlight would uh, appear on something like the EMEA and it would crumble under the light. And Mm -hmm. in my mind's eye, well, that just means it probably wasn't godly at the time the light was on it. It may have been godly before, whatever. And so I don't have trouble shining a light on GAFCON because I'm hoping it's godly. But I am gun shy because uh, I don't want what happened to the EMEA to happen to the GAFCON. Yeah, and also if you remember, Kevin, we were vilified. Uh, <laughs> we were we were sl- spoken slander. Yes, we were slandered, slandered. and libeled, yes. and people you know that we made this up. And uh, and at the end of the day, we were proven completely a hundred percent correct. And the and actually, the create the destruction of the old AMIA has led to a newer, healthier oh, geez, pair yeah. USA mm-hmm. that's uh, free from the uh, secrecy and the the things of the past. But man, I wish somebody else had uh, yes. taken the heat. So we can be a little gun shy, a little trigger shy in talking about Gafcon because we are supporters. We support 
a, a renewal within the Anglican Communion, and we both believe that GAFCON uh, is trying very hard to supply that. Well, Kevin, here, here's now where I'm having a difficulty separating my George brain from my analytical brain. Okay. I'm annoyed because the secret was kept from me. Me too. Therefore, therefore, I want the world to blow up. Why is nobody <laughs> upset? In well, other words, I'm not seeing, I'm, I'm, I am seeing, oh, this is terrible, but I'm not seeing statements and disaffiliations and nobody is questioning, will the GAFCON allow this woman to come? Will they seat her? I'm not going if she's going. I'm not seeing any of that. And But that's the type of stuff that makes our program work. You know, people have to be, you know, a, a little festered at these type of thing. I agree with you that... Uh, I'm not seeing the groundswell of the information. Now, either GAF kind of handled it perfectly, or people don't care, or like I talk about, the news is in arrears. Um, I think there, there's another component, and uh, that component is we're going to give GAFCON, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The shadow, no, yeah. the opposite shadow. Benefit of the doubt? What's that? Benefit of the doubt? Benefit of the doubt. You know, it's. It's 4.30 on Friday. I shouldn't be able to think at all. Uh, the benefit of the doubt. And I think uh, benefit of the doubt is playing out the day because everybody was tired of the buildup to Gene Robinson and that a type of affair, and it just wasn't worth it. All that buildup didn't stop a darn thing. See, now, I think I want people to hear me clearly. I am not perturbed about the actual issue itself. Mm -hmm. uh, whether or not uh, she's a bishop is, you know, Kevin and I sort of try to be uh, agnostic on these things. We have our personal views, but we don't push them. For me, where I am sort of exercised is the way this was done. What were they thinking in keeping it quiet? It was going to come that's out. What I can't get, that's what I yeah. can't get my head around. It was going to come out. Uh, uh, you and I were joking around, and one of our viewers, uh, I was looking for a title for this, said, Mitergate. <laughs> Now, Kevin, if I went to Episcopal clergy men's retreat yeah. and I saw a guy with a matching purse and hand a matching handbag and shoes, wow. I wouldn't come to the same conclusion that I would in looking at a bishop's meeting in South Sudan. I mean, of course, they're going to be transvestites at the Episcopal <laughs> clergy male gathering. You know, you, you've got different radar on. You do. Boom. <laughs> so no, I, I, I agree that keeping a secret probably wasn't the best thing. But I think in looking at this, and I was thinking about this yesterday, you know when you're trying to teach your, your child not to cry every time they fall down is when they fall down, you don't overreact. And I think Gaff kind of decided we're not going to overreact to this because, yeah, it's a big deal, but if we overreact, everybody's going to overreact. And, uh, you know, my first child, we overreacted to everything. Uh, the, 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 by the so time we got that to, explains <laughs> yes, her personality. It does. By the time we got to Ben, he could fall down a flight of stairs, and we wouldn't even raise an eyebrow. And so, I think Gafcon is treating this a little. We're not going to overreact. Um, I I hope they can they can deal with this when they get to Jerusalem in June, and I would hope that we could finally take uh, our leadership off primates and have more provincial uh, participation, uh, at least in a canonical way with uh, GAFCON. Well, Steve Knoll was head of a task force for GAFCON that put together a paper on women in the Episcopate that was presented, that was finished two weeks after this woman was consecrated. And one of the members of this task force was the Bishop of Rumbeck. Wait a minute, has, that's Sudan. <laughs> yes, and where is this woman bishop? She's the assistant bishop of Rumbeck. Didn't tell, and it's very clear in the Gafcon paper that they had no clue what was going on. So, wow. <laughs> it, maybe, maybe ignorance is bliss. We huh? don't know. We don't. In, in other words, I don't know. I don't have the full details. I don't know if Bishop Archbishop Dang just told them, "Yep, this is what I'm going to do." or whether there was a groundswell. Or, I mean, we have no real well, background. Uh, well, we do have background because of an interview uh, Bishop Dang, Archbishop Dang did after the fact. He said he couldn't wait to do this. That's true. But he told the primates at the April meeting in 2017, I did this as a wartime expediency because all the men are dead or in exile. And what did he say in the interview? 
In the interview, he said that I have long wanted to do this. He told Good News Radio, a Catholic outfit in South Sudan, I've long wanted to do this because I really think it's important for the church. So they don't necessarily line up, but, you know, people, consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. It is. Now we get to the point where this is like Gene Robinson. Remember for the longest time, um, you are recognized as a bishop, whether or not Canterbury recognizes you and whether or not you get to go to Lambeth, the big party. Mm. For GAFCON, the big party is Jerusalem. Are they going to extend an invitation uh, to the new female bishop? Is she going to be welcome uh, to go to uh, GAFCON 3 in Jerusalem? Well, we've heard two things. We've heard officially that the GAFCON secretariat does not issue individual invitations. They send invitations to the province, and then the province distributes them. But we've heard unofficially that uh, Bishop Elizabeth, oh yes, she's been invited. And she may, we don't know if they can raise the money to send all the South Sudanese delegation. So, yes, so officially, they don't know. Unofficially, yes, she's coming if the money's there for her. Hmm. A lot of the anxiety with Gene Robinson, I don't know, you, you were a young man in 1970, was it 76? Uh, you remember the Philadelphia the clergy? It was uh, Philadelphia eleven. Philadelphia eleven. I always thought it was seven. Uh, no, that's it, it's a caucus seven. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> in the dark of night, uh, a a bishop took uh, to the side some women and cons- and installed them as priest. And this led the Episcopal Church not to fight it, but to engage it, to incorporate it, and to be a leader in female clergy around the world. I don't think they have that fear with GAFCON and uh, this new bishop in South Sudan. I don't have that well, fear. Well. Do you have that fear is, at night? Do you, does that keep you up at night, George? No, because um, my fear is good order and decency. Mm-hmm. Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya all have women clergy and are all keen very keen to advance women to the episcopate correct who and the, those women whom they will be advancing to the episcopate are people who would make excellent bishops they're not you know like in the church of england they decided okay we'll have women bishops let's just have now tokens so you have absolute non entities uh do you remember the bishop, who, uh, the suffragan bishop of one d- southern English diocese whose claim to fame was that she had written a pamphlet about Christianity and nudism? You know, they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel for some of these non-entities they have in the House of Bishops of the Church of England. These bishops, now Bishop Elizabeth is on the front line of the faith. She, I'm putting her gender, her sex to one side. If uh, I think she's probably doing a wonderful job for the church because the Sudanese church can't afford to have duds uh, the way the Church of England can. But I like things done in good order and decency. Mm-hmm. I like my children to tell me they've taken the credit card before they go out <laughs> for the weekend rather than I, get, I find it missing on Saturday afternoon. I like a conciliar church. I like a church that has, you know, we do, you know, new things when the whole church has agreed upon it. And, you know, you and I, we're going to be employed as journalists forever. Thanks to Anglicans, Episcopalians, Roman Catholics. But you know what I, but you know what I find fascinating? It could be just a question of timing, but Lambeth Palace has said nothing. The ACNS has said nothing. To this day, we're still the only news service that has run these stories about the, the women bishop in South Sudan and the fight. In, the Sudanese press and little old Anglican Inc. Anglican Unscripted are the only outfits telling these stories. ACNS is silent. Um, the Church Times, which is now an appendage of the Church of England for all intents and purposes, is silent. We're the only ones doing this work anymore. After four years, we're the only video news source uh, in Anglicanism uh, that has a regular show that travels around the world. 
Uh, we are the only uh, uh, news source that I can think that puts out breaking stories. Uh, there are other people who do it like once a week or so, but it is what it is. Oh, this is a great chance. Guys, don't push pause, but we're going to take a little break here. Donate likes. If you, if you look there on the screen, there's a place you can like it on Facebook or like us on YouTube. If you've not subscribed to us on YouTube and you don't get regular updates of when the show is out, just click YouTube, uh, subscribe. Okay, and the final word, as far as I know, the last update is we're all going to Jerusalem. George, myself, and Gavin, uh, I'll be there videotaping. Um, we'll be doing interviews. Uh, George will be writing. You're not going to get in trouble again, are you? No, we won't get we won't strand East Jerusalem again. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll stay in the hotel lobby. <laughs> That's so bad. Um, and uh, so we need to raise money, and it's going to take a, a more money than I've ever had to raise uh, to go there. I'm looking maybe eight thousand uh, dollars. I have fourteen hundred dollars right now, thanks to the the faithful giving of people since November, and I th I know we're going to be able to do it. I've never not been able to go to an event I wanted to attend. So if you could go to Anglican... That's not true. That's not true. You did not go to the Super Bowl this year. I can't make my donors pay for that. <laughs> Our donors did not pay for you to go to the Super Bowl. No, they didn't. <laughs> so if you could go to anglican.inc forward slash donate. It's right here on the, on the, uh, on the screen. And uh, please, Mrs. Colson did pay for the NFC semifinals she, with Anglican Inc. Yes, she did. I went to that. It was a blast. The Vikings won last second. You can't beat that. Forward slash donate and uh, give what you can. Uh, if you want, go talk to the, the leaders at your church, the vestry, and say, I think our church should give to Anglican uh, TV because this is a big event. Happens once every three years. This is the 10th anniversary of GAFCON. We want them to be there. If you are a bishop and you want to see uh, uh, Kevin, George, and Gavin there, and you run a uh, diocese here in our country, in another country, you're welcome to give us a check. The address is there. Uh, um, and I'm, if you work at Lambeth Palace and you want us to change our editorial voice, <laughs> money well, talks. Oh my gosh! I could oh, in, in no time at all. I probably what six million, seven million. I would do it. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would sell out for six million uh, because that's my yacht and my retirement right there. But we're not there yet. So if you could please donate to Anglican TV, that would help us get to Jerusalem in June. Um, otherwise, I have but, to. What, take a boat? I'm cheap. I'm cheaper to bribe because Kevin has state taxes. We don't have income tax in Florida, so you've so got to give him an extra ten percent. Yeah, you probably bribe for five point five million. Yeah, that's a deal. I'm Kevin Carlson, and I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode three hundred and eighty of Anglican Unscript. When did we jump to three eighty? What is with my co-host? Three seventy. Yeah, three seventy. Three seventy. Anglican. Unscripted. Good.